Jamie Lucas says, hi, Scotty, do you have any plans for retirement? Yeah, I imagine if I retired, I'd be dead in 10 seconds. That's right at my grandfather. He retired in his 80s because my father shut the garage down and he was dead the next year. <laughs> I got to do stuff. And I tell you, I get easily bored. So if all I did was talk and make videos, I'd be bored doing that. If all I did was fix cars, I'd be bored with that. That's why I wrote a book on buying used cars and went on TV and now on the internet because I like doing a bunch of different things and I like helping people out. So my plans of retirement are I have no plans to retire at all. <laughs> Hottie Pro says, opinion on Nissan Titan. Well, I'm not a Nissan fan, especially since they merged with Renault. But the Titans, as far as I've seen from my own customers, a few of them have Titans. They were happy with them. They were a big truck with a V8 engine in them, and they could pull a reasonable amount of stuff. They had pretty good luck with the trucks. You don't see as many people buying them that buy F-150s or buy Toyota trucks. I definitely would buy a Nissan Titan before I'd buy a Chrysler Ram truck, that's for sure. I work on Ram trucks all the time because they're always breaking. So they're, they're decent trucks. For the money, I personally would get a Toyota myself, but they're not horrible. Palmer Aluta says, Scotty, what's your opinion on a 95 Mazda Miata and think of it get loud exhaust? Those are fun little sports cars. It's a 95, so it's what, 25 years old. It's an old car. <laughs> Don't pay much for one, you know? It's old. They made a lot of them. They made millions of them. What the heck? They're not worth a ton of money, but they can be fun to drive. If you're thinking about buying one and putting a loud exhaust system on it, I mean, unless you know a really good mechanic and you want to spend a lot of money, just leave what's on it. They run perfectly fine. Changes the flow pattern. Then you have to find a very good mechanic in order to make it run correctly with the changes that you've made to it. So, yeah, they make a little bit of noise the way they were. Stick to the stock exhaust. It's not like when I was a young mechanic where all you had to do was, if you took the exhaust off and put a loud one, you just had to rejet the carburetors, which you could do rather easily with a $10 kit, but they're fuel injected cars today. It's not that simple to make them work right. Mina I says, Scotty, can you tell us about the worst experience that you're working on a car? Yeah, uh, years ago I was working on this guy's Porsche 911 and he needed an intake manifold. Well, it took me about 10 hours cursing and swearing, plastic cheap piece of junk, taking it off, putting a new gasket and putting it on. And I told the guy, I said, I'll never do another one of these. I met this guy who was a German who worked on Porsches. Yeah, Ford pickup truck, hilariously enough, that's what he drove. But he worked on Porsches for a living. And I told him what I did and he said, why did you do that? That's an almost impossible job. We just pulled the whole engine out, do it on the floor and put it in. I said, well, I don't have the equipment to pull the engine. He said, well, we do it the Porsche dealer and we didn't just charge him thousands of dollars to do it. We don't care. They're people with money. But that was the absolute worst experience I ever had, and I never did it again. I learned my lesson not to work on those stupid things when they have horrible designs like that. C. Armstrong says, what do you think of a 2016 Chevy Spark with 18,000 miles? How long will it last? Okay, they're cheap little cars. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. But it's four years old. They have no resale value. If you can get that thing cheap enough, it could be a decent knock around car. They generally don't fall apart till they get 80 or 100,000 miles or more. So if you can get it really cheap and you don't mind a cheap little car, drive it first because you might be shocked and see how it rides and it might rattle your teeth so much that you decide you don't want that little thing. But if you don't mind its horrible ride, they do get good gas mileage with uh, 18,000 miles on it. Hey, it could still last a while. Just don't pay much money. They aren't worth anything used. They were bad enough new when they're used but with that low mileage eh, you want a cheap knockaround car what the heck you're not going to get a toyota with 18,000 miles for that kind of money smaro 0816 says how does ford keep getting more horsepower from the same f-150 3.5 liter ecoboost engine they can put bigger fuel injectors in they can beef up cam timing make the valves a little bit bigger they can do a lot of internal things but believe me leave be happy with your 2016 it puts out enough horsepower and Putting all those mods on costs a small fortune. Not only do you have to pay for the mods, you have to pay for the computer programming. You would have to get new sensors hooked up and new wiring. I mean, it would be insane. One you got works good enough. Be happy that it worked good because let me tell you, the new ones with more horsepower and all that added eco boost, turbochargers, and GDI injection, stuff's going to wear out faster. It just does. Mohammed Ibrahim says, what are your thoughts on a Nissan Juke 2011? They're weird looking cars as far as I'm concerned. Nissan, since they merged, their quality started to go down and down and down. The Jukes are relatively cheap cars. I rented one once 
And, and then I swore, I'm never running one of these again. It was so cheap. You felt every bump. It didn't shift all that good. It was a rental car, so it was an automatic. I'm not a fan. You know, I'm not a fan. But it's a 2011. If you're talking about buying a used one, if you can get a dirt cheap, it could be a good knock-around car. Dutch don't pay much for a car like that. Not all that well-made. But if you can get one really cheap and it's got less than, say, 50, 60,000 miles, they generally don't fall apart till they get 100-something thousand miles on them. Julian Estrada said, how long will the 1967 Chevy C10 live for? Okay, back in 67, those things were well made. If you change the oil, if you take care with it, it can last indefinitely. Everything in it is fixable. It's a 67 Chevy. It's got a carburetor. Carburetor goes bad, hey, buy a new Edelbrock, stick it on. Cost you maybe 250 bucks. Everything on those old trucks is fixable. You can do the engines over. The transmissions were simple. The rear ends were simple. Everything on those are simple. They can last forever if you take care of it. The only downside is if you live in a place where they put salt on the road in the winter and you find it's all rotten away, well, then you get rid of it because once it all rots, especially the frame, then it's shot and it's goodbye. But if the frame is and rotting, they can last forever. Especially you live in Arizona or New Mexico or someplace. Garcia says, Scotty, I got a 2011 Sierra 1500. When I make turns right or left, I hear it rumble grind on the front tire on the side I'm turning towards. I lose a little power during the turn too. If you hear a rumble coming from the tires when you turn, the first thing you want to do is jack it up in the air. Grab those tires. Pull on them. Could be a ball joint is bad and it'll wobble like that. A drag link. Anything worn in the suspension. So jack it up and check for wear in the suspension first. Now, sometimes it can be the steering rack or something that goes out the very expensive part, but more often, it's an obvious part that wobbles when you pull and then you replace it, especially like the lower ball joints. When they wear in your turn, they're going to make noises from the side you're turning to because if they're worn, they're going to jiggle a little and groan and sometimes pieces will hit things because there's too much play. I'm changing right one on a Toyota today and that's what was happening and the lower ball joint was broken on it. Mr. Nicotino says, sorry, I didn't listen to you. I got a 2016 Volkswagen GTI. It's leaking water inside the sunroof. It might be the rubber lining. Yeah, well, you should have listened to me, but let me tell you, even Volkswagens, as poorly as they can be made, I doubt the rubber lining's gone already. Here's how sunroofs work. Inside the sunroof on the front when you open it and on the back side are tiny little drain holes. Water always gets by those stupid seals anyways. They're not perfect seals. It's not like a submarine with a closed hatch. Those drain holes often get dust, dirt, debris stuck on the stupid things. What you do is you get some kind of compressed air and you blow those holes out. A lot of times that'll fix it. They drain out and then come out the bottom of the car. Those drains get clogged up. It's a very common thing. Huggins says my 2016 Toyota Corolla is 42,600 miles. When should I have the transmission fluid changed? And may I change it every 50,000 miles or so? You don't flush it. You just drain and fill. And that particular one, the last time I did one, I think it was less than three quarts of fluid. So it's not that much fluid. And if you change it every 50,000 miles, you won't have any problems. They tell you a lot of times, oh, it's lifetime fluid or change it every 150,000 miles. I change it every 50. It costs very little. You can even learn how to do it yourself. I have a video on that that shows how you can drain it and then pump the same amount of fluid back in. I would because I like things to last forever. I don't like things that break down too early. Well, Mama B says, how come I never see you fixing Fiat's? Well, because my customers are too intelligent to own them. <laughs> I've had people who did own them, and I told them, get rid of them. They were falling apart anyways, and they. And then if people asked, should I buy one? I say, don't buy that pile of junk. They're garbage. Fiat is probably going to pull out of the United States with the Fiat brand. They sold so few cars last year in the United States. Now, that said, a lot of these Chryslers have Fiat engines and transmission because Fiat owns Chrysler. So, you know, they sneak the Italian stuff in on you when you don't know it. But the actual cars, they're junky, and most people, they won't buy them. Fiat pulled out of the United States in the 1980s. Now they came back and they're still doing horrible. People aren't buying them because they had a, some people had a bad taste and some people tried them out and they fell apart. There aren't any mechanics that really know how to work on them here in the United States anyway. So when they do break, which they do a lot, they don't fix them very well. <laughs> That's why you don't see me working on them. And if somebody brings me one, I'll work on them. I got the equipment to work on them, but my customers are too smart to buy that kind of car. Alexander Kramer says, Scotty, where can I buy those glasses? Oh, you can't, because they don't make them anymore, and it kind of pees me off. I got them at one of these commercial chains. It's called Technolite Flex. But they don't make them anymore. Luckily, I bought four frames, because I know, hey, I'm going to sit on them. They're going to get crushed. Stuff's going to happen while I'm working on cars or driving motorcycles around. And this is my last set of frames because I broke the other ones. Now, I'm really afraid what's going to happen 
if I need new ones, because then I'll start all over again. I thought, gee, you know, I'll buy it from this big company. They'll have them all the time. It was iMasters. They promised me that, oh, yeah, you know, we, we always have these, and we'll get you some. And then I went to order some more. They said, oh, yeah, we got, there's two of them in stock. Then I call them up. Oh, we can't find them anywhere. And they said they could, but they couldn't. So they all lied to you. <laughs> At least I got these left. I still have pieces of the other ones. So maybe I'll be a Frankenstein sunglass wearer after a while. One from here, one from there is different pieces break off. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.